midnight on the 17th. Prior to that, we have previous day's low. So this is the lowest trading point on the 16th, and we transitioned into the New York midnight hour. At this moment, this is when all the banks come online and reset and peg the daily high and the low. At this moment, the highest high and the lowest low of the next 24 hours is going to be predetermined. It won't be an everyday occurrence because everyday occurrence is enigma, and I don't teach that. That's for me and my family. Knowing that the market has a predetermined high and low, then there should be things that repeat over and over again that would lead to the mechanism or illustrate evidence how that process is done. That's what I figured out in the 90s. I want you to see some of the components here and I'm going to show you one daily schematic. This is what one daily range in my understanding of how price is booked and delivered algorithmically. Now there's going to be subtle nuances that shift in and out that may look a little different but generally the underpinnings are the same. On the 17th of August the market opens here in midnight. It continues into a small consolidation, trades just slightly above the 16th high and then trades aggressively lower down into 4.30 a.m. New York time. It runs the previous day's low. Okay, Resting below this is sell side liquidity. What is sell side liquidity? It's sell stops, orders to sell short on a break below that level. Once it goes below that, it purges that liquidity. So sell side liquidity now has been purged here. The previous low on the 16th is swept. When that is swept and the daily bias is bullish, this is no longer just a sweeping of stops, it's a purging of stops. Because sweeping stops can still be traded lower in this example here. Much in the same way, this high here, it's swept and then goes lower. But the daily candle is predetermined to be bullish. So we're not looking at this down move and trying to short and try to hold for a down close on the daily candle. We're looking for an opportunity to go higher. So before it goes higher, it takes out the low here. It trades down below that, and because it sweeps that low and the bias is bullish, this is now a purging of sell side liquidity. So in your notes, you wanna make sure you have stop sweeps above an old high or below an old low. They can still be traded through at a later time. A purging of liquidity is in line with the daily bias. Daily bias for this day is bullish, okay? So we trade below the previous low, and it aggressively moves higher. Comes back down in, trades into the previous day's low again, and into a ICT bullish order block, which is this down close candle right here, okay, that black candle right there. This low, I was trusting as the low of the day, and it was the low formed in London. So I'm working with a bias that's bullish. I'm trusting the fact that the London session created the low of the day. I'm not scared of buying when this starts dropping down. I'm not fearful that it's gonna go lower than this low. I'm trusting the signatures that the interbank algorithm provides me because the algorithm that books price every single day is not changing its state. Its mode of delivery is always the same. It's reaching for liquidity. It's moving to a premium. It's moving to a discount back and forth all on a time delivery process. Everything is time and price. The magnitude of how big these moves occur are based on the price level. So in the element of time and price, you anticipate moves relative to time. The magnitude of the move is linked directly to the price level. So the blending of both time and price gives you visibility. We trade down the previous day's low again. Right below these relative equal lows, we have sell side liquidity. It's purged. It's not just swept, it's purged. Why is it purged? Because the daily bias is bullish. So any run on sell stops or sell side liquidity, that is a purging of liquidity. Once this happens, it should aggressively move higher. It breaks above these highs, trades up to this high here. And now at this time of the day, this is the New York session between 8.30 in the morning and 11. If you look at the beginning of this line here, it's 8.30 and at the end, 11. All right, so between 8.30 and 11, that's your New York session. And we have a high here and prior to that high, we have this low. So this low and this high, this is your interbank dealing range. Your interbank dealing range high here and your interbank dealing range low here. Now, why am I using this low and not say this low? Because once we start the eight o'clock time window, 
all of the pre-news events that occur generally at 8.30 in the morning, all of those instruments start calibrating and anticipating price runs on the 8.30 news release. And I'll say that again. 8 o'clock in the morning to 8.30, in that 30-minute window, every instrument that's trading at that time they all start calibrating and what do I mean by that they're setting up parameters that would if it goes above a certain high if it goes below a certain low there's gonna be liquidity above that so we have a dealing range low here this is the lowest low here's 810 so at 8 o'clock at 8 o'clock that's this candle here its low is only here at 810 we have this low okay so you have to use that low for your dealing range low so the interbank dealing range low is this low and the interbank dealing range high is here so this is the range that sets the the stage for your New York session. Now, enter my ICT Optimal Trade Entry Pattern Recognition Series. If you're bullish, this is your range you're working within. So from this low to this high, you're waiting for it to retrace down into an Optimal Trade Entry, which is the 62 to 79% tracement level. And that's what I'm highlighting here. But this dealing range low is outside of the New York 8.30 to 11 o'clock. That's fine. It does not matter because the element of time is 8 to 8.30. At 8 o'clock, all the calibrations start for that 8.30 in the morning news embargo. When that news embargo lifts, all the news starts flooding the marketplace. The algorithms are going to go start firing. This is your low. This is your high. And we start receding down into that range. That range is the high here and the low here. Trades down into optimal trade entry. And inside of this last up close candle prior to this low. So you have relative equal lows here and a high prior to that low being ran. So this low that took out liquidity here, this is a bullish breaker, this candle right here. That's what I'm annotating there. So take that range out in time and extend it in time. So we're trading down into that breaker, into this dealing range, into an optimal trade entry, inside of a day that's bullish with relative equal highs that have yet to be traded to. Now, this run above is not a purging of buy side liquidity. Why? Because the daily candle is expected to be bullish. So this is a sweeping on stops. Notice how the algorithm creates a high and then another high. So we have relative equal highs. They're going to want to come back up there and finish that unfinished business or candy land. So traders are going to look at that as what? Retail resistance. The run to the 80 level. This is an institutional price level. What does that mean? Your 80 level, your 0.50 level, your 0.20 level, and your 00, 0 levels are all institutional levels. Now, they are not the only institutional levels, but predominantly they're the ones, if you have them on your chart, you're going to see key turning points and targets being traded to at these levels. Above these relative equal highs, if we're bullish, and we are, reaching above these equal highs, if you look for an institutional price level, a 50 level or an 80 level or a 00, zero level, if you use that as a target, many times you're going to get really, really close to the daily high and the low. Again, it's not exactly at 80, it's not exactly at 50, it's not exactly at 20, but they are your general rules of thumb. As you can see, the high on this candle, we trade to a high of 118.80 and 9 pip bets. And in this candle here, again, 118.80 and 9 pip bets. So it just went a little bit above 18.80, but not by much. And then we had a nice reaction here that retraces down into the price run here. Now, if we're bullish, we have a price structure for this low, the price high here prior to this run down and clearing sell side liquidity, trading back to a bullish order block. Why did it go below this low? Because we've already taken sell side liquidity over here. I want you to take a look at the price structure here. We have a, a low to high in this low in here. The volume of price structure swings are going to be better measured in the bodies. If you use the bodies of the candles, this open and this close is the same price. So we have price trading down into, and yes, it trades beyond the 79 cent tracement level. That's fine because I mentioned already the FIB is not the secret. That's not what it is. I'm not entering always just on optimal trade entry. I'm looking for other factors. With this price structure, we already know that relative equal highs, there's going to be buy sell liquidity. So the market should reach up to that level. Okay, fine. What level should it reach for? There's an institutional 80 level, 1880. Let me scrunch this down a little bit so you can see it. There you go. So we have 1880 above these relative equal highs, and we have one standard deviation of 11880 and one pip bet. See that? What's the high on this candle here? 1880 and 9 and 1880 and 9. So we were off by eight pip bets with the fib, but still reaching for the 80 level. If I don't have a 
number of them. What number? Mm, three to five specific signatures that I look for in the algorithmic price delivery. I won't take the trade.